Corinthians chapter 4. We're going to read uh, four verses from 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. And we're going to go to a, a uh, verse in the book of Joel, chapter 3. So 1 Corinthians chapter 4, we're going to read verses 1 through 4. And then we'll go to the book of Joel and read one verse, chapter 3. <clears throat> Okay, let's all stand out of respect to God's word. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not my own, mine own self. For I know nothing by, mis- my, by myself, yet I, am I not hereby justified. For he that judgeth me is the Lord. And let's uh, go to Joel chapter 3. Joel chapter 3, verse 14. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Let's pray. Father, thank you again for the word of God, for the truth we're going to talk about this morning. I'm so grateful, Lord, that you've made available to us not only salvation for free, but also the Christian life. And thank you for that, Lord, because we didn't go right to heaven when we got saved. We left, we're left here on earth, and we need <clears throat> need to know how to live our life. You instructed us. We need help to live it. You offer your help, and uh, we need it made simple. You've made it simple. So, Lord, help us to uh, give our all to this, what we're going to talk about this morning, and this, make the right decision here in our life. If anybody here is not saved, if anybody downstairs is not saved, they don't know for sure they're going to heaven, help them make the right decision regarding their salvation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> sure talks a lot about how what an amazing God we have. If you know, we if you just take the whole year and if you really listen, make this year you li- really listen, listen to the words of the songs. Pay attention to the words of the songs you sing, pay attention to the words that are sung in the specials. And then on top of that, you pay attention to the word of God's being preached. You're going to you're going to end this year with you're going to feel so Awesome! You're going to think you have this awesome, amazing, incredible God. Because we're, we're going to talk so much about that this year, about what a great, powerful God, through the songs and through the preaching. And I hope you'll pay attention to it because, um, man, the world offers nothing when it, compa- when it compares to what God offers us. There's nobody in the world like him at all. And uh, what a blessing it is to be in his family. Turn to, Take your Bible and go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And verse 2, let's pray. Father, thank you for the Bible. Thank you for the, for the wonderful music we have around here. Thank you for the, the truths of the songs, but especially for the truth of your word right now. Help us to pay attention and listen carefully uh, to what's going to be said uh, from your word this morning. Help us to make the right decision. In Jesus' name, amen. We read in 1 Corinthians 4, 2, Moreover, it's required in stewards that a man be found faithful. We read in Joel chapter 3, Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. Now, one of the decisions we have to make in our life is the decision to be faithful. That's what we're going to talk about this morning, the decision to be faithful. As we begin this year, we need to realize there will be a lot of decisions to make in this this 2018. At the start, I want to help you to make the most important decision you will make all year if you are a Christian. If you are not a Christian, the most important decision you will make this year regards your salvation. You will decide... Uh, or will you decide, rather, to get saved? Now, being saved means to be saved from hell. Maybe you hear the word salvation or saved when it comes to God. It's being saved from hell. It's not being saved from your problems at all. It's not being saved from sinning. It's being saved from going to hell because you have sinned. All right? And so Jesus is the only way you can be saved from hell. You can't be saved by being good. You can't be saved from hell by getting baptized. You can't be saved from hell by joining a church. You can't be saved from hell by by doing anything else, by looking to Jesus, because he's the one that died for your sins. He's the one that bought you the gift of eternal life. He is the God. He proved that by walking out of the tomb. He defeated death, hell, and the grave. Uh, He defeated all of it. And uh, he is the Savior, just like he said he was, and he's the only one that can save you from going to hell. But you have to ask him to be your Savior. And you will decide this year whether or not you're going to do that. And if you have not made that decision yet, that is the most important decision you will ever make in your life. Period. That's it. Now you will decide 
to be saved or you will decide to stay unsaved and headed for hell. That's your decision. You have to decide that. If you are already saved, the most important decision you will make is whether or not to be a faithful Christian. You will decide or make the determination as to whether you are going to be a faithful Christian or an unfaithful Christian. To decide something means to make a determination to do something. And I want to help you make the right decision or determination in the area of being a faithful Christian. Now, to be faithful uh, means a firmness, security, stability, steady, trustworthy, sure, certain. That's, let me give those words to you again because that are the, those are the words that describe a faithful person. They have firmness, security, stability, steadiness, trustworthiness. They're sure and they're certain. Now, that's what the word, those are the words that are supposed to describe a truly saved person. Those are words that ought to describe you this morning when it comes to your relationship to God, when it comes to your Christi- Christianity. That ought, those words ought to describe you. Now, Unfortunately, they don't describe most of God's sons and daughters. 1 Kings 19.18 says that out of all of God's people at the time, only 7,000 had not bowed the knee to Baal. Baal was a false god. There were a whole lot more believers than 7,000 back then. But only 7,000 had not bowed the knee, knee to Baal. God said in Proverbs 20, verse 6, he said, a faithful man was hard to find. He challenged, he said, a faithful man who can find. Well, when I read that, I want to answer that challenge. I want to say, God, look here. I'll be one. And sadly, some who were faithful actually stopped being faithful. Psalm chapter 12 and verse 1 Psalm chapter 12 and verse 1, the Bible says here, Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. But God said in our verses this morning that we read that it is required or expected that we be found faithful. We are all supposed to be uh, stewards uh, because we've been entrusted by God to let our light shine as an example of Jesus. We've been trusted by God to tell others about Jesus and to bring glory to God with our life. So we're all stewards, and it's required in stewards that a man or a person be found faithful. So we must decide or determine to be faithful as Christians. So that's what we're going to talk about this morning. Let me go through those definitions of faithfulness. The word faithful means firmness. And what I'm talking about there is this. You say, this is what I'm going to do, and persist at it. And nobody is going to change my mind. This is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to persist at. And nobody, nobody is going to change my mind. Faithfulness means security. God looks at me, and people look at me, They look at the way I live, and they feel very secure or safe in having me in their life. It means stability. I will stay at this day by day. It means steady. Not up and down. I don't have to make up lost ground because I skip some days. It's a steady daily thing. Trustworthy. It means trustworthy. Dependable for anything that is requested of you. It means sure. Definitely going to do something or going to be someone. So sure, be somewhere. It's going to be a sure thing. It means certain. Because of a faithful lifestyle, you are certain to get things done. These are words that are <clears throat> go along with the word faithful, and that's what's supposed to describe you as a child of God. In fact, God said it's required. God said it's expected of you to be faithful. God didn't say you had to be the best soul winner. God didn't say you had to be the best singer. God didn't say you had to be the best preacher. God didn't say you had to be the best Sunday school teacher or the best bus worker or the best Christian. He just said, be faithful. That's what he said. Let me give you some examples of those kind of people. Go to Numbers chapter 12, verse 7. 
Numbers chapter 12, verse 7. <clears throat> Listen to what God said about Moses. Numbers 12, verse 7. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all mine house. 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 17. It talks about Timothy. 1 <clears throat> Timothy chapter 4. <clears throat> it's not 1 Timothy 4, 7. Uh, 17, because there is no 417, but I, this verse talks about Timothy being a faithful person. All right, uh, let me see if I can find the verse I'm looking for here. Um, <clears throat> nope, I can't, but it does say in there, I promise you. I looked it up. Colossians chapter 1, verse 7. Colossians chapter 1, verse 7. Talks about another guy here in Colossians 1, 7. Also you learned of Epaphras, our dear fellow servant. Now watch what it says about here, about him, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ. Go to chapter 4, verse 9 of Colossians. With Onesimus, a faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you. Talks about him being faithful. In 1 Samuel twenty two fourteen, David is called faithful. In Daniel 6, 14, Daniel is called faithful. So all throughout the Bible, God takes note to call people faithful. Now, let me give you the results of being faithful. Matthew 24, 45, and I'm going to make it real practical here in just a little bit. But I want to give you the results. If you make the decision this morning that I am going to be a faithful Christian, let me give you the results of that decision. Matthew 24, 45, it says, Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, to give them meat in due season? You will be rewarded. For your faithfulness, God takes note of it, as we already saw, but he, he will reward you for your faithfulness. Luke nineteen seventeen, and he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, thou hast author have thou authority over ten cities. So God is going to reward you for your faithfulness. In Nehemiah chapter 7, Nehemiah chapter 7 and verse 2, it says here, Nehemiah 7, 2, it says, I, Then I gave my brother Hanani, and Hananiah, the ruler of the palace, charge over Jerusalem, for he was a faithful man and feared God above many. Because he was faithful, God raised him up, gave him charge. He exalts the faithful people. He, puts, he, he points people to you. When you're faithful, he exalts the faithful person. Now, you shouldn't want to be exalted, but I'm just telling you, you make your decision to do what you're supposed to do, what you're required to do, which is be faithful to God. God will point people to you. I don't know about you, but I want God to use my life. Amen. I really do. Nehemiah chapter 13 and verse 3. Nehemiah chapter 13. Nehemiah 13. <clears throat> Nehemiah chapter 13 is verse 13. And I made treasurers uh, over the treasuries. Shal Shalemiah the priest and Zadok the scribe and the Levites. Pedaiah and next to them were, was Hanan the son of Zachar the son of Madaniah. For they were counted faithful and their office was to distribute unto their brethren. So because these people were counted faithful, the Bible says he promoted them to positions in his work. Luke 16, 10 through 12 talks about that. 1 Timothy 1, 12 talks about that. God recognizes your faithfulness. God doesn't exalt and lift up the talented. He exalts and lifts up and promotes the faithful. That's what he's looking for, the faithful. Listen, if he did the talent, I'd be out of luck. There's no way I could get anywhere in God's work if it was dependent on talent, because I don't have any. I'll tell you that for sure. I don't have any talent to sing. I don't have any talent or anything. I can't think of anything I can do great at all, but I can be faithful. I can do that. And God, that's what God promotes. That's what God exalts. Go to Psalm 31, verse 23. Psalm 31, verse 23. Psalm 31, verse 23. The Bible says, O love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful, and powerfully rewardeth the proud doer. He preserves the faithful. That means the word preserve there means he protects the faithful. Wow, that's a great promise there. I go, I'm going through my life, and I'm going to face a lot of dangers this year. Dangers I don't even know about. Some will come my way, and I'll see it's dangerous. Some are being worked out right now, planned out to, to attack me, and I don't even know about them coming. But God said, you just stay faithful, and I'll protect you. Yep. That's what he said. I'll protect you. 
Proverbs 28, 20. I love this verse. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 20. Proverbs 28, verse 20. He made this statement about a faithful person. He said, uh, chapter 28, verse 20. He said, a faithful man will abound, shall abound with blessings. A faithful man shall abound. That means there's going to be a lot of them. A lot of blessings for the faithful. Not for the, oh, because this person's got a powerful voice. They can sing really good. Wow, God's going to really bless them. Oh, that guy can really preach. God's going to really bless them. No, God doesn't bless that stuff. God blesses faithfulness. If you see a preacher getting blessed, it's because he's faithful. If you see a person that can sing uh, for the glory of God getting blessed, it's because they're faithful. That's who abounds with blessings. The faithful. You see? Go to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 1. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 1. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 1. The Bible says here, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints, now watch this, which are in Ephesus, and to the faithful in Christ Jesus. I want you to read, I want to read another verse about that in Colossians chapter 1, verse 2. To the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae. Now, he's writing these books, the books of the Bible, the Word of God. And who's he writing it to? He's writing it to the faithful believers. Man, pay attention to that. The Word of God is written to the faithful. We get those that are faithful, those that make that decision to be faithful, we get the treasures contained in it. Oh, we get the we get the stuff. We get stuff. If you're if you're part of the we here, I'm talking about. We get the things that other people don't see in the yeah. Bible. God doesn't God doesn't give people think truths in the Bible because they're smart. He gives them truths in the Bible because they're faithful Christians. They're faithful at living the Christian life. That's why they get the treasures. The word of God was written for the faithful. Now, of course, God expected every one of us to be faithful. So you can say, well, the, the Bible is written for all the Christians. Yeah, with the understanding that you're going to be a faithful Christian. See, that's the way it's supposed to be. Go to Revelation chapter 2. Uh, in fact, let me just read another thing here. Second, Before I read that, go there. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2. It says here, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Then Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10 Revelation chapter 2, verse 10, Paul was writing, or I'm sorry, John, writing to this church, and he says, For none of these things which thou shalt suffer, for none of these things which thou shalt suffer, behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried, you shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. You see, you're going to be rewarded with a crown for being faithful. Not for singing the best songs, not for being the best teacher. No, for being faithful. For being faithful. That's what God's looking for. That's what God, God's not looking for the talent. God's looking for those that decide they're going to be faithful. Go to Revelation chapter 17 and verse 14. This excites me. I hope it excites you too because this is something I can do. I can do this. Revelation 17, 14. The Bible says, These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is the Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. The faithful will go. Where are you going? I'm going to the restroom. Can you sit down and just hold it, please? It's preaching time. Thank you. All right. God will reward the faithful. They'll go with Jesus to the war at the end. We'll be there in the war at the end of the time. God's going to reward the faithful for that. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 21. Read that. Matthew chapter 25, verse 21. The Bible says, what his Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I'll make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Enjoy God's joy. You'll get to enjoy the joy of the Lord by being faithful. And then look at Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. I love this. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. The Bible says, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, for in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. That God is allowing those that are faithful to be part of the thousand year reign. Here on earth. Wow. So you see, you, God is recognizing. God sees it. 
And God's going to do something about it. God's going to reward you. Maybe may be tough. May be a struggle to be a faithful Christian because you're going to get attacked by the devil a lot. But God sees it, and God's going to reward it in a big way, not only down here, but also when we get to heaven. Now, what are we to be faithful in? Let me give you real quick here what you're to be faithful in. You're supposed to be faithful in obedience. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 5. The Bible talks about Exodus chapter 19 and verse number 5. Exodus 19, 5, it says here that, uh, Now therefore, if you will obey my voice and deed and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And so God is telling his people, I want you to be obedient. And God, of course, what requires us to be faithful in this area of obedience. Faithful, not just part of the time, but all of the time. Someone that can be counted on to be an ob obedient person. Also in Psalm, uh, 2 Chronicles 19.9 and 2 Chronicles 34.12 and Proverbs 27.15, in doing God's work and serving the Lord, God expects us to be faithful. Boy, oh, we need faithful Christians in the, in the area of serving God. We need people that are trustworthy, people that will be counted on to do what they're supposed to do. 2 Chronicles 31.12, in giving to God's work, he talk, describes people as being faithful in giving tithes and offerings to the word of God. So, I mean, when it comes time to tithing, you don't tithe uh, one week out of the year, 20 weeks out of the year. You, you tithe in everything you're increased in. You tithe in according to what God says. Psalm 123 verse 2 talks about being faithful in waiting on God. In waiting on God. Don't, don't, don't just wait on God for certain things, but anything you got to wait on God for, just keep being faithful at it. Proverbs 25, 13, in delivering God's message, we are to be faithful. 3 John chapter 5, in whatever we do, we're supposed to be faithful. Revelation 2, 10, in trials, we're supposed to be faithful. You see, and we keep being faithful until we see him, until we see him face to face. Matthew 24, verses 45 and 46. Now, let me get it, get real practical what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about being faithful in daily Bible reading. Okay? I'm not talking about reading it five days a week. I'm talking about reading it seven days a week. All right? And by the way, multitudes in the value of decision, you're deciding this morning, are you going to be a faithful Christian or not? I'm talking about reading your Bible every day. Every day. You can do that. That is not hard to do. You can do it. You say, I don't have time. If you don't have time to read your Bible every day, you are too busy. You're too, to be to have not enough, not enough time for God, aren't you glad the one who runs the whole universe has time for you? Amen. Every day, every day, I'm talking about being faithful in daily prayer. Not four days a week, not three days a week, but seven days a week. Every day, you spend time with God in prayer. I want you to take your Bible and go to Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25. I'm talking about being faithful to church. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Now, this verse is teaching a lot of stuff. One of the things it's saying is we're supposed to have, I'm just going to paraphrase it, we're supposed to be there when the church doors are open and we're supposed to go to church more, not less. As we see the day, the day of the Lord, approaching. I'm talking about being faithful to church. I'm talking about not one time a week, not two times a week, not three times a week, but four times a week. That's what I'm talking about. Faithful in church attendance. Faithful in church attendance. <clears throat> you know, I do, a lot of hard, I do a lot of hard things in my life, as you do too. But can I tell you, getting up, getting dressed, going into the car, Starting the car, driving to church, getting out of, the, out of the car, walking in the church, coming in, sitting down. It's not hard. It's very simple. You can do it. You can do it. And you can be a faithful Christian. That's what we need. We need faithful Christians. I'm talking about being a faithful soul winner. And here's what I mean by that. You're, you're going you're gonna to decide this morning. You're going to decide this morning to be a daily Bible reading. You're going to decide this morning to be a daily prayer warrior. You're going to decide this morning to be faithful to church whenever the doors are open. You're going to decide this morning if you're going to be a soul winner. And I'm talking about you decide, okay, I'm going to learn how to do it, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to learn how to witness to people. I'm going to learn how to tell people about Jesus. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to witness to every available person at every available place at every available time. I'm going to be a faithful witness of the Lord. I'm going to be a faithful tither. 
I'm going to do it. No matter what my increase is, I'm going to do it. I'm going to tithe. Uh, I'm going to give 10% of everything that I increase, any kind of income increase I get, I'm, uh, my paycheck, uh, birthday money, Christmas money, anniversary money, a gift, doesn't matter what it is, I'm going to tithe on everything just like God said to do. I'm not going to rob from God. I'm not going to take God's money. I don't care if it's vacation time. I don't care if it's Christmas time. I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to tithe like I'm supposed to. I'm going to give the missions. I'm going to support the missionaries that our church sends out to get the gospel to the world. Now, I'm talking about that's what you ought to be faithful. Now you say, boy, how do I do that? How do I do that? Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. A decision means a determination. You decide to do it. You make a determination to do it. All right, you do. You just decide, I'm going to do this. I'm going to be a faithful Christian. If that's what's required in me, that's what I'm going to be. You, that means you set a time to do these things. You make a plan. You make a plan. All right, you set a time for daily Bible reading. You set a time, you make a plan. Have a time, have a plan. Don't do this. Oh, let's see, I got some time now. I don't think I'll do it now. And here we go. Where am I going to read? Don't do that. Have a plan. Have a time, a set time, and a plan. What's it doing? It's helping you be faithful. That's one of the reasons God said let everything be done decently and in order. You organize. All right? You have a plan. Have a plan. Uh, make a plan. Make a plan of where you're going to pray. Have a prayer list. That's one of the reasons why we pass out a missionary prayer list, the prayer bulletin, the thankful list that Miss Laura made up. That's what we, why we pass those things out. So you can have a time of prayer and have a plan when you pray. Now, I'd set a time to go soul winning. Set a time to go soul winning. We have two times a week church-wide soul winning. We have ladies that go out every day of the week. You got There's times you can go. Set a time and make, be faithful at doing it. Make a plan. Set a time for church. Make a plan. Tell everybody, hey, this is what we're going to do, and that's it. We're not changing anything. Budget the tithe and missions. Make a plan. Make a plan. When I make my, my monthly budget out, first thing on the list every week is the tithe. That's the very first thing. I don't see if I can, I don't pay my bills and see if I can tithe. I tithe and see if I can pay my bills. By the way, God says, if you tithe, I'll make sure you can pay your bills. Make a plan and then work the plan. Work the plan. Just do it. Just do it. All right? No, I can't hold your hand. Nobody else can hold your hand. You have to do it on your own. Now, God will help you. God will give you the help if you want. He'll do it. He'll do it. He'll help you. One of the ways he'll help you is he'll bring such conviction in your soul when you don't do what you're supposed to do. He'll, he'll make you, I don't care. God, I'll tell you what, God, I want to please you so much. Make me feel guilty if I have to feel guilty when I don't do what I'm supposed to do. If I'm not being faithful, if I'm walking away from being faithless, make me, make me feel guilty about it. Because I want to do what I'm supposed to do. I want to do what's required of faithfulness. Boy, Jesus was sure faithful to us. God is sure faithful God to us every day of the week. God is good. He always does good. He's right there when we need him all the time. He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins when we, when we sin against him. He is just a faithful God. Let's be faithful to him. So make a plan. Work the plan. And don't get sidetracked for anything. Don't let anything creep in by just skipping any of these one time. Because it turns out, if you skip it one time, it's two times. Then it turns into three times. And you turn into an unfaithful Christian. And you join the huge crowd of Christians who are not faithful to God. The choice is yours. You have to decide it. You're one of the multitudes in the valley of decision. You're one of the Christians that you're deciding now as we start the year, am I going to make 2018 a faithful year? Am I going to be a faithful Christian? Are you? If you're not going to be, <clears throat> uh, then uh, it's easy to become an un unfaithful Christian. Just don't do what you're supposed to do. But you will be with the multitudes that decided they weren't. I mean, can you imagine all those people, only 7,000 people didn't bother to need a bail? Can you imagine all the millions of Christians there are in America? And most of them aren't faithful. You want to be with that group? I don't want to be with that group. 
Uh, I'll stay with the group that's faithful. I like what God says, how he's going to reward us. I like the fact that he's going to reward us. He's going to promote us. He's going to protect us. He's going to give us many blessings. He's going to reveal the word of God to us. We're going to get a crown of life. We're going to be with Jesus at the war at the end. We're going to get to enjoy as God enjoys in, in people and things that are happening. We get to enjoy that same joy he has. We get to live and reign with Jesus for a thousand years here. I like that. I like all that. I want to be a part of all that. What about you? Faithful. Faithful. You know, I wonder if Jesus had the same attitude that you have right now in your heart toward being faithful to God, would he have finished the work that God called him to do? Would we even be saved today? Think about that. If you're sitting here this morning and you're saying, eh, I don't know if I want to do that. Aren't you glad Jesus didn't say, eh, I don't know if I want to go to the cross. I don't know if I want to take care of that. Eh, I'll finally go through all that. You'd be on your way to hell right now. Isn't that terrible? But he was faithful. He was faithful. And God calls us to be faithful, and we can do it. We can do it. But it's our decision. Will you decide this morning to do that? The choice is yours. What will it be as you go into this new year? Am I going to be faithful, or am I going to be with the majority that are not? All right, let's pray. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, thank you again for the word of God. Thank you for loving us and caring for us, and thank you for uh, <coughs> giving us this kind of life to live and giving us everything we need to live a successful, blessed life here on earth. And we look to you now, Lord, for your, for your help in this decision that we have to make. Lord, I know there's so many reasons maybe why we, why we wouldn't make this decision, but help us to make the right decision here and decide we are going to be faithful. It's required in stewards that a man be found faithful is required. And we are stewards. We've been entrusted with, with uh, the, living the Christian life from the unsaved and living and uh, being a light <clears throat> that shines and giving the gospel to people. We've been entrusted with this. So we are stewards. And so it's, you required us to be faithful. So help us decide we're going to be. Help us be honest with you that we have not been and, and repent of that. Make a decision this morning to be a faithful Christian. Heads bowed, eyes closed. I said at the beginning that one of the major decisions you make here is are you saved or not? If you've never trusted Jesus as your Savior, are you going to make that decision and get saved? Are you going to get saved today? You decide that. If you don't know for sure you're going to heaven, you're not sure heaven's going to be your home when you die, you decide whether or not you're going to get saved today. You can be. We can take, you, you, we can take the Bible and show you from the Bible how to go to heaven when you die. It's up to you. All you got to do is leave your seat, walk up to Brother Kevin when the song begins and say, I'd like to know how to go to heaven. And we'll t take the Bible and show you how. And you can walk out of here knowing for sure heaven's going to be your home because you trusted Jesus as your Savior. What a great day that would be. What a great way to start the year. If you aren't saved, if you are saved, then you make the decision of whether or not you're going to be a faithful Christian. If you are, faithful, are a faithful Christian, are you going to stay a faithful Christian? A lot of faithful Christians that started in 2017 faithful dropped away. We saw that in the Bible, that, that, that happens. You decide if you're going to stay faithful to God. It's your decision. Which one will it be today? <clears throat> How many say, Pastor, I remember when somebody told me about Jesus. They showed me the Bible, that I was a sinner on my way to hell. They showed me that Jesus died for me, and he bought me the gift of eternal life, and that he rose from the dead. They showed me in the Bible that if I asked Jesus to save me, he would save me, and I decided to ask Jesus to save me, and I know for sure I'm going to heaven. If that's you, you raise your hand. I know it for sure. I'm saved, and I know it. You may lower your hands. How many would say, Pastor, I'm not sure I'm going to heaven. I, I don't have any... <clears throat> assurance of that in my soul. I, I want to go to heaven. If I could see from the Bible how I could be sure, I would love to look at that. If that's you, would you raise your hand? I'm not sure I'm going to heaven, but I'd like to be sure. In just a moment, we're going to have a song of invitation, and you're going to decide this morning, if you're not sure you're saved, you decide whether or not you're going to walk up here and go up to Kevin and say, Kevin, I'd like to see from the Bible how I could go to heaven because I'm not sure I'm saved. If you tell him that, he'll direct you to somebody that will show you from God's word, God's plan of salvation. If you are saved, the next thing to do is to get baptized. And you can do that today. All you got to do is leave your seat, walk up to Kevin and say, I've been saved. I want to get baptized. That's something a Christian is supposed to do after they get saved. And you want to do that today? You come up and tell Kevin, and we'll be glad to baptize you this morning. If you are saved and baptized, you want to join the church, just come up and tell Brother Kevin, I'd like to join the church. But if God spoke to your heart and you want to be a faithful Christian, you're going to decide, you're going to determine this morning to be a faithful Christian in this year, 2018. <clears throat> Why don't you come and tell God that? Make a commitment to God this morning that I'm going to be faithful. With your help, I will be faithful. Tell him that at this altar. Right? Let's all stand. You obey the Holy Spirit as she sings.